Hello, my name's Ben. I'm the Technical Arts Director at Topeka Bible Church here in Topeka, Kansas. And uh, I know a lot of you guys are curious about our Blackmagic studio cameras. Um, so I'm just going to give you a quick rundown here of our setup, um, how we've got them configured, and I just updated the firmware, so I've got the CCU, fake CCU options uh, working, and it seems to be pretty awesome. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. I'll just show you our setup and how we've got things configured here. So yeah, here's our rig. Um, we've got the studio camera, 1080p version. Um, we're outputting 1080i, 5994, or 97, one of those. Uh, as you can see, I've got a Canon uh, 70 to 200 f4 on here, outfitted with a follow focus from Red Rock Micro. Uh, it works pretty well. We can get some pretty smooth focus pulls and actually next year I'm gonna be purchasing some whips uh, for these to get the focus down on the, um, down in the operator's hands a little more comfortably. Right now we have no motorized zoom options. I'm still trying to figure out how to do that, but we don't do a whole lot of live iMag. Uh, it's mostly following whoever's teaching back and forth, so this works pretty well for us at this point in time. We're mounted on a wooden camera, 15 millimeter rod system. It's pretty solid. Uh, wooden camera sells a specific base plate just for the Blackmagic Studio camera. Um, so we purchased that along with some rods and a, I got a lens support for that. Um, and it works really well, it really solid materials. Um, and I really like the quality of their work. Um, to connect to the camera or the lens to the camera, I bought a Red Rock Micro Active MFT to Canon EF mount. Um, this mount goes in between the lens and the camera and it has a little display up on top here that allows you to choose the f-stop of your lens. So um, when you stick it on there, you power it up and you can set it to, I just run these wide open at 4.0, uh, but if you want to, you can stop it down. Uh, and that, so that's pretty cool since the camera doesn't really have the ability to do that. I opted out of going with the Micro Four Thirds lens just because there isn't really that much on the market uh, without forking over a lot of dough. Um, so this lens cost us about $800. Moving on around the back, we've got our controls here. Uh, everything since this update, they added some nice heads up information here, frame rate, shutter speed, gain, color temperature, camera name, format, etc. Um, right now I've got the focus assist on. You'll see it highlights stuff in green. Uh, so I can send the program feed to these cameras by pressing the program button. That's also how the camera control information makes it to the camera. It embeds uh, that stuff on the program line. Uh, we are running optical fiber here. Uh, we've got floor pockets with fiber run to them. Uh, so everything we do is over the fiber. And here's our Telex comm system. I love the big display on the back of this thing. My volunteers love it. It's awesome for getting critical focus. Um, it's just really nice to look at. Here's our other rig. Uh, same identical setup, except the only difference is that I've got the Canon uh, 24 to 105 f4 lens. Uh, this allows me to have a telephoto and a wide shot of the stage. Um, this lens is not parfocal, um, so we can't do any zooms live, but it's sharp, the colors are good, and it matches the other lens quite well as far as colors and all that jazz. So there you have it. Here's our other rig. See everything highlighted green there. We've got the color uh, focus assist going there. All right, here we are in uh, our video uh, rack room. 
We've got our video hub, our production studio 4K, and then this guy here is the Blackmagic camera converter. Um, it's a rack mount unit. It has four uh, fiber in and out, uh, four SDI out. So basically all of those cameras, uh, all the pockets we have with fiber, run straight into this guy and then this takes it and converts it to SDI and then that goes straight into the back of our switcher. Uh, and then we take the program out um, from the switcher, which actually goes through our hub, uh, and route that into the program return onto this guy. Uh, and that allows us to send that program feed back to the cameras. Um, and that also allows the control uh, information to pass along those lines as well. Okay, so here we are. Um, I'm in our video control suite now, and uh, we've got the two cameras in this building. Um, you can see on the multi-viewer here that uh, we've got these. both of these two cameras here are in one building, and then these two down here are actually in another building across the street. We have a really interesting setup here. Uh, so anyway, I've got my two Blackmagic Studio cameras up here. Um, and let me show you, I'll go over to my software control now. So here's my um, 8M software control, probably something you're very used to seeing. Um, I've also got a hardware panel, uh, just the 1ME panel. Um, so what I'm going to show you is just some really basic control. I haven't had a ton of time with this, um, and I'm not a professional shader by any means, so this is just me farting around with something I barely know anything about at this point. Um, but I'm just going to try to show you some of the functionality, so I'm going to go ahead and get to the program here so we can see it bigger. And we are going to look, first of all, at camera one, uh, which is our telephoto shot. I've just got a little cloth set on an iPad stand there to give a decent white uh, for reference. So let's move right in here. On the ADEM software control, uh, there is a section down here for camera. So I'm going to click on there. And you'll see here I've got uh, camera one, it's on air, and if I switch to camera two, now that one's on air. Um, so that's pretty cool. So this is, this is where it all happens. Um, and I've tested this and it works really well. So just to start out, I'll show you um, with camera one here, I'm gonna hit this button to expand. I've got lift, gamma, and gain. And then down here I've got sliders for contrast and saturation, hue, and I'm not sure what this guy does, but some of you guys probably do. Um, so right off the bat here, you'll notice over here I've got um, my gain here. I've got shutter speed and color temperature. So this will get you a ballpark. Um, so right here I can go ahead and click, and you'll notice we're getting a brighter image. Um, so I'm probably going to, zero looks just a little bit dark, so I'm probably going to bump it up here to 6 dB of gain. Um, and then over here, I'll just show you some of these more finite controls. Um, well, first of all, you know, I can click through my white balance here. Uh, so I run at uh, 5600K in our auditorium. Um, so we can just make finite uh, little adjustments here. We've got our blacks, you know, bring our blacks down just a little bit. Uh, I can run our gamma up and down if I want to. You know, something like that. And then we've got a, another fine, more finite gain control here. Um, and then, you know, you've got these big adjustments like contrast. I could crush it if I wanted to or or not. Um, 
We can boost our color saturation, or I could pull it completely out and get a black and white image, which is pretty cool. I can do that right there. Um, so I'm going to set it maybe about there. Like that. Uh, I can set my hue. Which, honestly, I don't have to do a whole lot of color balancing because um, 5600K is color balanced with our our face light. Our face light is all RGBW um, uh, strand fixtures. So I've got our white balance dialed pretty well in, but if I want to come in here and adjust, I don't even know which one to grab, but I can grab one of these and just kind of, you know, you can see here that it's adjusting the image. Um, you know, maybe put a, put a little more reds in there, or blues, or, you know, you can kind of dial that in per taste. So now I'm going to go to our other camera here. Um, and I'm going to just try to get this one close as well. I, obviously, you'd want to do this looking at vector scopes and your multi-viewer for comparisons, but I'm going to bump the gain up on this one as well. Um, I'm going to set our lift. I'm going to crush those blacks just a little bit. Uh, lift our gamma just a little bit. This lens is just a little bit darker than the other one. And then uh, just kind of get our gain where we like it. And then color balance. Maybe warm it up just a touch. It looks almost like my uh, um, washcloth is a little bit more washed out on this camera than it is. This, this one, so I might back the uh, gamma off just a little bit. Well, maybe I'll leave that there, but I'll back off my gain just a little bit. So that looks pretty good. Um, but hopefully, hopefully this has kind of shown you the uh, functionality of um, the camera control system in Blackmagic. It, it works pretty well. The response is great. Um, I really can't complain about, um, you know, it, it's it's not a full functioning CCU, obviously. Uh, this is a very, very cheap way to have remote control of your cameras. It's a great step towards that end. Um, you know, most camera control systems are a lot more expensive than what you pay with this. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, or shoot me a, a Twitter. Uh, you can find that stuff in the description. Um, I hope this has been somewhat enlightening for you, and uh, happy techies. <laughs>